Hey, I'm Rajana the Ruler back with another video. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. Stay a while, you know, get to know you, girl. See what's tea, okay? If you are not new here, I consider you my A1 day one, and I just want you to know that the love is reciprocated, okay? The support that you guys give. And speaking of support, shout out to the fact that I just hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. Like, Never. When I first posted my video September of last year, not in a thousand years that I think I would be here. So I appreciate y'all for the love and the support. 50,000 is not a small achievement by no means. 50,000 people. That's insane. But let's get into it. If you are new here, uh, I am unfortunately a convicted felon. I did eight and a half years in prison off of a 10 year sentence for trafficking and cocaine in the state of Florida. I was at every single female prison in the state of Florida, except the work camp. Because honey, they work for real over there. And I had no desire to be at the work camp. Thank God I never ended up there. Today we're gonna talk about the shakedown that traumatized me when I first got to prison. Of course y'all understand that contraband in prison is a big deal, it is. I did a video about contraband. Contraband can be anything. There's regular contraband and then there's contraband that can get you another charge, okay? Um, anywhere from an extra pair of socks to cocaine, weed, drugs, all of that, shanks, all that. All of it is considered contraband. Having anything that the statute says that you're not supposed to have is considered contraband, even if it's color pencils, okay? All of it is considered contraband. Now, all prisoners have contraband. Some people just have regular everyday contraband where if you get searched, most of the time the officers just throw it away. They don't even document it and they just go about their business and then you have contraband, well, you going under investigation, like you going to jail, you going to all kind of stuff. And I know y'all like, how you go to jail in jail? You definitely go to jail in jail. You go to jail in prison, it's called solitary confinement. Okay, you get a little room by yourself or you may have a bunkie. The worst thing about being in confinement is having a bunkie. Now I know you like, well, if you in there, you might as well have somebody in there with you. No, because you don't understand how random prison is. It's not, y'all not alike in no way, but the fact that y'all both got convicted of a crime and sent to prison. Y'all not alike. It, it's not like somebody you can normally relate to. Most of the time it's somebody 30 years older than you, somebody that's snoring they sleep, farting they sleep, somebody who be up when you sleep and sleep when you trying to be up. I hate having a bunkie. I hate having a bunkie. But anyways, we're gonna talk about the first shakedown that traumatized me. Now I had my locker search before. I told y'all about it. one of the times I had my locker search, which was I think the first time when the officer tried to tap on my bed in the middle of the night. He thought he was asleep, but it was around my birthday. Actually, it, yeah, it was around my birthday. It was right after my birthday. So when I first got to prison, I was the broke. I was broke pressed. Okay, I didn't have no scum money. I didn't have nothing. I didn't have the stuff I was supposed to have, like lotion, shampoos, conditioner, none of that. And I had a friend, we're gonna call her Marissa. Marissa is not her name. But when I first got to prison, I was very angry and miserable. I didn't want friends. Like, don't talk to me, stay from around me. I always had a unit on my face. It was this one officer who always told me that he thought I was demon possessed. And it used to piss me off because I have a relationship with God. So don't call me a demon. But he said, I always look like one. But Marissa, she was like very like vibrant. She's always making jokes. She's funny and stuff like that. And it's like, I was just always miserable and down. Never wanted to talk to nobody, never wanted to mingle. And our beds were side by side. And she used to just always randomly talk to me. And her energy was just so upbeat that we kind of got along. And then we really connected over the space table because she liked to play space and I liked to play space. So a relationship was formed. That is That was my friend. So she didn't really have no money at first either. Like she was struggling just like I was struggling. We was both ashy and downtrodden, looked at like some hobos. She didn't have none either, but her father ended up passing and she got money in the mail. So baby was up, she had her coins up, okay? And when she got her coins up, my birthday was coming. And one thing I can say about prison, if somebody is really for you, like dumb bonds can last because there was some things people did for me or ways people was there for me in prison that I just would never be able to forget because strangers don't owe you anything, right? 
So she got her little money. She didn't even tell me she was doing anything for my birthday. I didn't ask her to do anything for my birthday. And my birthday is September 18th and her birthday is September 19th. So of course, you know, big Virgo energy. Like one thing about it, we love a birthday. Okay, even if you say you don't want to do nothing for your birthday, we're going to do something. It don't matter if we just take pictures and go get a coffee from Starbucks. We're going to do something. So her birthday was the day after mine. And my birthday come and I'm talking about she went all out and she bought me every single thing I needed. We had dark and lovely shampoo and conditioner and those things were so expensive. It was like $9 a bottle. She bought me three of each, the shampoo and the conditioner. We had hot oil, the pink oil moisturizer. Those was like $6. She bought me like five of those. She bought me like six deodorants. She bought me like six things of baby powder. She bought me like everything that I needed and she even bought me food. This stuff is expensive. She bought me a whole case of soup. She bought me like refried beans. She bought me food, everything. And like on my birthday, I was real prideful back then because I didn't want people to judge me because I didn't have anything. So it was real hard for me to take stuff from people. And it was like, no, I don't care how broke and hungry I am. I don't want nothing. Like my stomach can be growling. And they'd be like, oh, would you like some of this? And I'd be like, no. Like, I'm not your charity case. Like, no, I'm nobody's victim. So <laughs> I was very prideful. And she just bought me so much stuff. And it was like, I just felt so grateful. And like, I was very overwhelmed because she didn't even tell me she was doing that. And I know that she did that out of the kindness of her heart. So it was easy for me to accept it from her because I knew it was because she cared about me because we established a friendship when we neither one of us had anything. So she bought me all this stuff I'm talking about. It was so much stuff. It could barely fit in my locker. And we had like big lockers at Gaston. I was at Gaston Correctional Facility. It's in Quincy, Florida, like in the Panhandle. It was cold up there, okay? North Florida. I'm a Floridian, so it was cold for me. So we up there in, in Quincy, right? At Gaston. So when it comes to a shakedown, contraband is considered anything you're not supposed to have per the statute and anything you do not have a receipt for. So if you buy a pair of shoes, you better keep the receipt for them shoes. Now receipts fade and everything, but you have to keep that receipt because if they do a locker search and you can't produce that receipt for them shoes, even though you bought them, them yours, they taking them, contraband. If you don't have a receipt, contraband. So it was this really, really, really nasty officer. We gonna call her Officer Mattis, okay? Very nasty, I'm talking about she was worse than me, okay? I told y'all I was miserable and they told me I looked like a demon walking around. I rebuked that, but she was worse than me. This lady was so nasty for no reason and she just walked around terrorizing people, trying to intimidate people. Like she was one of those people, she'll come at you real disrespectful and nasty and then when you catch an attitude, like she'll bow up, like she ready to fight. Like, ma'am, you are not ready to fight and you know we can't fight you, so you need to stop. Okay, because the Department of Correction, they house gangsters. They don't hire them, okay? I mean, kind of, they do. They done hired a few, so maybe. But she was just so nasty. Just like, she was one of those people who thrived off of being nasty. And like, over the years, I heard that her mama had passed away, I think, from some type of illness or something, and they said it just made her very angry and miserable. I had more understanding after I heard that years later, but still, everybody's been through trauma. You you can't continue to use your trauma to tra traumatize other people. We all been through trauma, so at some point, it's like, go ahead and get over it. Like, I had to get over my trauma too. There's plenty of people who have lost parents, have lost siblings, children, in horrific ways, and they still find a way to pass around kindness and light. So you really don't have no excuse, no one does. No one does, but she was very nasty. So she came in and you know when it's a shakedown, there's a difference between a locker search and a shakedown. A locker search, they have to do every shift. They have to do so many. So they come in, I told y'all with the clipboard and that little clear small trash bag, the clipboard is so they can mark off what bed they did, what they found and that trash bag is so they can put the stuff that you paid for in it, okay? We have a person that normally works around this stuff. I can't give y'all too much information because I ain't trying to give y'all too much information. But we normally have an inmate that goes and gets whatever stuff they throw away and then you have to buy your stuff back from the inmate. I know it's crazy, but it's either buy it back or they're gonna sell it to somebody else. So that's what a uh, locker search is. The bag and the clipboard. A shakedown is completely different. Now, a shakedown is 
first thing in the morning you get up get dressed and everything around about eight o'clock they call work call that's for you to go to education that's for you to go to your job wherever it is that you go they do that first thing in the morning around about eight o'clock 8 30 is getting a little late so everybody dressed ready to go outside a shakedown is when you think you're going outside that day you think you about to go to work because they finna call a work call and then out of nowhere you just see the doors open and you see every officer that you could possibly name just walking in the dorm when this happens you already know what time it is and they come in so suddenly that you see people trying to rush and go hide their contraband and all kind of stuff like that but once they there it's so hard to, it, it, it it's nearly impossible. Now, we still do it. We still try to cuff like stuff in our bra. Like you try to slide stuff in your socks. You try to slide it in your pillow, in your bed. Hopefully, you get one of them officers that ain't that petty to look in your pillowcases and your mattress and you try to put it in your coat that's hanging. Like you try to hide what you can in places you think they're not going to look because not all officers' petty level is the same. Right, and then you'll have probably like 15 to 20 officers that come in the, in the dorm and they each like five of them take the first row, the next five take the next row and like that. So y'all all getting hit at the same time. It's not like they getting hit so you can sit here and try to, you know, and then no, they hitting all at the same time and they watching, you got people literally standing up to the front, watching your every move to try to see if you trying to do anything. If you get ready and you're like, oh, I got to use the bathroom, they gonna strip search you before you go in the bathroom in case you thought you were gonna hide anything in the bathroom, flush anything down the toilet, anything like that. You get strip searched, okay? You get patted down if you got to use the bathroom during the shakedown. So I'm on my row and when you in a shakedown, it's nothing you can do. Like, you know, you finna get shut down. It's like, it is what it is. So that what you start to do is pray that you got the nicest office in the building. So you scan and you like, oh, hell no. Oh no. Like, oh that, no, she gonna take all my stuff. Like, oh, that nigga, that be tripping. So you just going down the line, like trying to figure out like, Lord, please let me get that one. that never be the one I get. Like, I never get the nice ones. Like, never get the nice ones i always get the ones who seem to have a problem with living and breathing so i get officer mattis she on our road so we all like oh well we might as well go ahead and give her our stuff because one thing about officer mattis she's been doing it so long she knows about the pillowcases she knows about the stuff you put in your sauce she knows the lady i mean she's been doing it so long she already know you know what i'm saying it's, it's hard to run game with somebody who's been working in the department longer than you've been living in the department okay so she coming down our road, we like, you know, it's over. And she take her time. So her search is taking longer than everybody else's. Where these other people at the bed, probably like five, 10 minutes. She's sitting at the bed, 20 and 30 minutes. It's like, later, move on to the next one. And she getting to me. Now, mind you, I already had a unit on my face. I was angry and miserable at the world. But I didn't talk. I didn't interact with the officers. I didn't go out my way for them to have to say anything to me or nothing like that. And I was miserable, but I was the type of person that I kept my misery to myself, okay? I didn't go around making everybody else miserable. I stayed to myself. But one thing about being in prison that they do not like even if you're not disrespectful, even if you don't give them lip, even if you don't go mouth to mouth, eat, they do not like when they feel like you are not intimidated by them. They cannot stand that more than they can't stand a person that's disrespectful. Like if they can't intimidate you, it just does something to their power trip and they just, it, they do the most. And I wasn't intimidated. Like nothing you did intimidated me. So it was like, I'm not intimidated by you. First of all, I'm young, angry, and miserable. What, what, what room is there for me to be intimidated? I probably ain't got the sense God gave me to be intimidated right now. So she get in my locker, my face looking just like hers, and I'm already like, you know what I'm saying? My stuff gone. This lady, now most officers, even the pettiest, of the pettiest, of the pettiest, the nastiest ones that you could have ever ran across, people do not take your hygiene. They don't do it. It don't matter. The people do not ask you about your hygiene. And most times they don't ask you about your food. Like they don't ask you about your food and your hygiene. Everything else is up for grabs. They don't take your hygiene. They don't ask you, oh, do you have a receipt for this? Or why do you have so many of these? They, they don't do that. It's just, they they inhumane. But I guess at some point they have an understanding. Like I can take all your, you know, colored pencils and your bleach and all of that. But I'm not going to take your food. Like I'm not going to make you hungry. I'm not going to take your hygiene. Most people just, they just don't do that. This lady comes to my locker. This is after my birthday and everything. And I got all this stuff from my friend. And she goes in my locker. That lady takes everything. 
every single thing, every shampoo, every conditioner, everything, a baby powder, every deodorant, all my food. This lady cleaned out my locker because I was not intimidated by her. I didn't disrespect her. I didn't try to like give her word to word mouth. I ain't try to do none of that. Like this lady took all of my stuff, bro. Every little piece of it. I was so happy. Like you have to understand. I told her I was proudful. Didn't let nobody give me nothing. Didn't have anything. So when she gave me all that stuff, like I felt good. You know, it made me feel like, okay, you need to stop being proudful and let people do stuff for you. Like it's okay for people to be nice to you and do, you know, it's okay. And then when she took all that stuff, bro, it just undid all the good vibes and positivity that was trying to stir up in my spirit and you just undid all of it and it was just like see now I felt humiliated I was embarrassed because it's like everybody knew I didn't have anything and then she gave me all that stuff and it's like now she's taking it in front of everybody so I was like so humiliated because it's open everybody can see it and it's like everybody know I don't have anything so everybody know how serious this is for me to lose it and it's just like I'm talking about everybody was mad everybody like the inmates and everything was like you dead wrong i have a receipt for nothing and i couldn't keep it like i could not keep anything i think the only thing i ended up keeping was i had a receipt for like some deodorant and i think uh pink oil because i used to buy pink oil for my house because i had to have pink oil um i had a receipt for like a thing of deodorant so i literally had to like i ain't have no money so i wasn't buying stuff so i only got to keep like a few things and i was just so i cried and it wasn't even like you know, oh, she took my stuff, I'm sad. I cry angry tears because I wanted to fight this lady so bad. I wanted to hurt her. I didn't care if I was in prison. I didn't care if it was like 20 officers in here and I knew for a fact, if I swing on her with all 20 of them in here, they gonna beat the hell out of me, okay? They, they gonna beat the hell out of me because if you attack an officer, they have all right to use force to arrest you, okay? And if they hurt something to break something in the transition, all they got to say is, well, she hit Officer Mattis. And they're going to be like, okay, well, I understand why you broke her arm, her leg, knocked out her whole front row of teeth. But I was so angry, bro. And I was crying. And it, used, it pissed me off because I was crying. And she got a, a rouse off of that because she get a rouse. I told her off of being nasty. So it was pissing me off even more that I was satisfying her arousal. Like, oh, I was so angry. And she took all of my stuff, bro. And that shakedown, it was not the worst. Okay, it was not the worst out of all the shit down I've been in in prison, but that was the most traumatizing one. That was the one that showed me ain't no sympathy. Okay, don't have no feelings to no country, man. Anything you ain't supposed to have, the moment you get it, just be on the countdown. Like, okay, I got this. Let me see how long I can keep it. Because they're coming to take it. So after that, when they used to take my country, man, I ain't have no feelings. I used to be like, I'll get another one. It is what it is, but that one, it hurt my spirit. That one traumatized me because I didn't understand people could be that inhumane. And I know there's people like, well, it was country, man. You wasn't supposed to have it. Okay, I ain't say I, <laughs> I didn't say I had a shank. I said I had hygiene, I had shampoo, conditioner, and I have a lot of hair. I know y'all seen it. And not being able to maintain it, oh my God. Like she cleared my locker out, cleared my locker out. And then even my friend Marissa, she tried to tell them like, oh, that's my stuff. I just didn't have room cause she didn't have no room. Like baby had stuff all in her locker. Like I told you she ran to some scummy and she had stuff all in her locker. And she was like, oh, you know, that's my stuff. Cause she had a receipt for it. She was like, that's my stuff. She just holding it in her locker, but it's contraband. If Even if you have a receipt for it, if it's in someone else's possession, it's considered contraband. So they still took it anyways, and it was very traumatizing. And I learned from right then and there, don't get too much contraband at one time because you're going to be hurt when it get taken. So just, 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 just get what you can afford to lose because you're going to lose it. But that's all I have. Once again, I appreciate y'all for the 50K. Cheers to 50 more. Y'all are awesome.